Hi everybody, my name is Rebecca and welcome back to my bookish travels. Today I'm going to be wrapping up the month of March for the books that I read. I do apologize for not having a video last week, but things happen and sometimes filming has to take a backseat to what happens in my life. I will tell you though, to make up for it, today's video is going to be super long and you're probably wondering why and that would be because I read a lot of books because for some reason I was very stressed in the month of March and I just compensated by reading a lot and that is not a bad thing. So without further ado, let's jump into the books I read in the month. The first book that I read and finished was given by Nandi Taylor. This book I gave four out of five stars for. I absolutely loved this book. I loved the dragon aspect. I loved our main character. I, in general, just definitely escaped to this world and was thoroughly enjoying this fantasy novel. The reason why I took Star Away, though, is because I went into it feeling like it was a standalone, not realizing that this is not a standalone. At least, if there's not going to be another book, I'm not going to be very happy because there are answers that I need that did not get answered in this. And I just really need those answers. Even if it's a short novella, I will take it. But in general, this was fantastic. And I would say if you guys are looking to read something that has fantasy, it's got dragons, romance, magic, it's got action and adventure, and it's got twists and turns more than you can even think is possible, this is what you're going to want to read. I definitely enjoyed it and I'm so glad that this did not sit on my shelf for too, too long before I actually got reading it. The next book that I listened to was Evil Has a Name, the untold story of the Golden State Killer. And the main narrator on this was Jim Clementi. This one definitely got five out of five stars. My mom and I listened to this true crime podcast on Audible together. It was very, very scary listening to it. It was very much a nerve-wracking thing for me because this is something that could happen to anyone. And I think it was presented in a way that it not only gave you the specifics behind the scenes of what was taking place, it also gave you a little bit more information from the victim standpoint for things that were released to the public. And in general, I think if you guys have watched the Night Stalker on Netflix, that short miniseries that could probably be a little bit terrifying watching but after the fact that I had listened to Evil Has a Name it didn't like freak me out as much it was still very scary watching that but listening to this story about the original Night Stalker who held like eight different personas all across different states it that was terrifying and if science hadn't changed and developed for research and for crime scenes and medically, he might have still been free. So this is one that I definitely say, again, like, if you guys need to listen to something that is very well produced, please check this out. Or in general, please check out a lot of the Audible original podcasts because they are well worth it. This one was definitely a 5 out of 5. It was not listened to for its entertainment factor. It was listened to for the information that could be given. And I much prefer listening to those rather than watching them. Oh, I need to grab that. The next book that I read was I Prayed For You by Jean Fisher. I ended up reading this to my niece Marley when she was over here at my house one day when my mom was watching her and she really enjoys a lot of the books that I bought her. This one she actually sat through for me to read it fully and actually was very excited to read this one again. I ended up giving it five out of five stars because again, 
my niece loved it and I think this one is very well written. The next book that I listened to was Emerald Green by Kirsten Gear, and this was narrated by Anthea Bell. I gave it five out of five stars. I cannot state how many times I've read this series and I still love reading it. I love getting to experience the story again. I love picking out different clues that I maybe didn't notice previously. And just in general, I really enjoyed listening to this one again. It was one that definitely just brought back fond memories. And I'm pretty positive I read the series or started the series shortly before or after I first started YouTube many years ago. It was nice to experience the story again and have it read to me. The next book that I read was How to Study the Bible in 28 Days by Kay Arthur, and my mom and I did this Bible study together. We started it a while ago. We didn't actually do it in 28 days just because of how my work schedule falls and different things like that, but I gave this five out of five stars. If you guys are not familiar with inductive Bible studying, this is a really great jumping off point. I found that it really encouraged me to delve a little bit deeper in my own searching first before I start looking to other sources and I highly recommend if you guys have not done this study and you're looking for a really good one definitely recommend it. The next book that I read was Once a Princess by Joanna Lindsay and my mom ended up actually borrowing and reading this after I finished it because I loved it so much. This story just fully gave me everything I wanted. You could tell that it was written in the 90s <laughs> with how the story actually develops and everything like that, but it just, even now, like, you can tell, like, I just can't stop grinning. The story is about a girl who has no idea that she is a princess, and these men have come to collect her to take her to the kingdom where she is betrothed to the prince. And it's all of the mishaps that happen with this occurring. And I just, I love the characters. I love the fact that we have a female lead that is just like, yeah, no. Like, I have a knife. I will stab you. And <laughs> that that's all we have here. And seeing that something that I've been like, why are we not developing more characters that are, are kick butt? And all of a sudden, this is something that started in the last maybe five, ten years. Here's one from the 90s that was like, let me stab you with this sword. So for this one, I ended up giving it five out of five stars. And I would actually love to see this produced as a movie or a short, like, limited miniseries. I think it would be hilarious and very enjoyable. It definitely was giving me Princess Bride vibes. Like, just in general, I probably could sit down and be like, this character is that one, this one is that one, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da, because it just gave me the same feeling of happiness that the Princess Bride gives. The next one that I finished was More Bedtime Stories for Cynics by Nick Offerman with an assortment of other narrators. This was one out of five stars for me. As I mentioned in a previous video, I listened to the first one and I didn't really like it, but I had already purchased this one and that was my mistake. So I ended up, I, I listened through it. I think there was maybe one that I might have liked, but in general, I just was not feeling these ones either, so this was a one out of five star for me. The next book that I finished listening to was Real Crime, Locked Up for Life, narrated by Julian Drucker, and I listened to this one with my mom again. It was labeled more as true crime, people that had committed crimes that were locked up for life. But when I started listening, it ended up being a little bit more, actually a lot more, with regards to the European legal system, politics, and the perception of society with regards to these people. And I didn't like it. I didn't really go into it with the idea of, okay, I'm going to learn a bit more about the European legal system. 
I went in going, all right, I'm going to kind of hear the breakdown of what took place for the crime, how they kind of process solving it, and then the outcome. <sighs> wasn't what I got. It wasn't what I was wanting. So for that reason, it's two out of five stars for me. And it's because it was okay. Like it did do what it was supposed to for the story with regards to providing information about the legal system, kind of looking further into what it was about. It was just I didn't read far enough down to actually explain to me what was taking place. So that's why I gave it two out of five stars because the initial like first paragraph said it was something completely different than what I got. So the next three books I ended up reading because I bought them for my niece for her birthday that comes up in May and all three of these I gave five out of five stars. I think they are adorably cute and as children's novels are ones that again excited to have on my shelf for her to peruse at her leisure. So the first one is Sometimes I Like to Curl Up in a Ball by Vicki Churchill and Charles Fuge. This has a wombat in it guys and it's just the, the staff member that recommended it was correct. There is a awe factor to it. You should read it. I bought Five Little Monkeys Jumping on the Bed by Eileen Cristello. I didn't mean buy it. Well, I did buy, but I also read it. And this one, guys, I love the artwork in this. We know the story. If you haven't grown up singing the, the song, then I don't know. But if you guys can see, like... It literally looks like this entire page, the artwork, has been done with crayons. And just the detail, like, if you guys have a chance, go to the bookstore and look in this book. The artwork is beautiful. And the last one for those was Don't Push the Button by Bill Cotter. Guys, I love this book. I was entertained with this book. I want more of this book. <laughs> so this was the third one that I ended up reading simultaneously because obviously you have to look at the books that you're buying for someone. Make sure that they're, you know, going to be of interest to them. And this was definitely not a disappointment. I read it and I was like, girl, your recommendations are awesome, but you got to stop. I can't buy more. So definitely very happy with these three. Five out of five for all three of them. The next book that I read was, well, actually, I didn't read it. I listened to it. It was The Career Change Coach by Selena Barker. And this was an audible that I listened to. I ended up giving it three out of five stars. I enjoyed listening to it. And I think that there were some really great points that I could take away from it. But it also wasn't necessarily something that I was fully involved in. I actually felt a little uncomfortable at times because I felt like these are these are personal sessions that we're listening to and they're personal for a reason. So it was a little bit awkward, but I feel like a lot of the information that was coming about and getting to hear is really good because again, sometimes we know things, but when someone else tells us things, we listen a little bit more. So for me, it was three out of five. I liked it, but I just didn't love everything about it. The next book that I finished listening to was The Queen's Gambit, written by Walter Tevis. This one I ended up giving four out of five stars. There were certain things in the story that made me slightly uncomfortable, which, again, part of the story, and I think it's what made it work. And I just think it was brilliant. Like, the writing was very well done. It was very slow-paced at the start. I think it's one that I preferred in an audio format to physically reading myself, because I did find that beginning part very dry. Also, I, I need to do some research on chess, because I've always enjoyed it. I've always thought it was brilliant, but I myself cannot play an ounce of it. I also found that very hard because, again, having it maybe read to me, I was able to kind of follow along, but I'm very visual. So if I could have actually seen the pieces moving, then it would have made a little more sense to me. I have recently started the limited series for it. Very excited, taking it a little bit slower because, again, some of it is very heavy subject matter. But for me, I really enjoyed listening to it. I think that the author did a really good job taking something such as chess and having that be what a story surrounds. And it just was very well done. Again, made me slightly uncomfortable at times, but the author 
did a really good job because if an author can make you uncomfortable while reading a book, all the power to you. The next book that I finished was The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane by Julia Noble. This book, guys, was fantastic. This is middle grade. There's mystery. There is intrigue. There's murder. <laughs> there are so many things going on with this story. I don't even know which way to turn yet. I love this story. I want more of this story. I own the next book in this story. I need to read that. But this one, guys, the characters, the boarding school feel, everything was just, all of the marks that could have been checked were checked for me because this book had everything I wanted. It was fantastic. I didn't know, I didn't even want to start like analyzing things while I was reading it because I was just loving it so much. And I'm like, this is what I love about middle grade. It's fantastic. If you guys have not heard or read this, you should. Also, if you're looking for something by a Canadian author, definitely check this book out. The next book that I read was on my Kindle and that was Step Brother with Benefits, the first one by Mia Clark. I gave this three out of five stars. It was interesting. I would definitely say that I enjoyed the actual like writing style of the author because although it's written specifically from like first person for the female and male lead, they each kind of have this stream of consciousness thing going on and it was quite hilarious to read. But for the most part, I found that a lot of what was coming across was very realistic. It was a very fast read, too. It was only a little over 100 pages. So for me, I gave it 3 out of 5 because I did like it, but there wasn't enough there for me to fully be like, I loved everything about this. But I would say if you want to see a different kind of writing style, more stream of consciousness from a first-person point of view of the characters, definitely give that a check. The next book that I read was Edward Lear's A Book of Nonsense. This one I gave two out of five stars, and I was actually really surprised that I gave it, you know, just a it was okay kind of vibe, because when I was younger, I remember reading one of Edward Lear's poems, and I really, really enjoyed it. I just loved the nonsense of it all. But for this one, I, I would say I enjoyed it because... It, it definitely didn't have any rhyme or reason, but I feel like they tried to put sense into it for this, like, actual edition, and that's not what I wanted, because it was laid out very seamlessly for for certain things, and I, I wanted it for its nonsense, not really for it to make sense, where all of a sudden I started being like, oh, well, this, uh, this connects here, and that goes there, and that's not what I wanted my mind doing. I will tell you guys, though, if you have not read something by Edward Lear, you probably should because he's right up there with Alice in Wonderland. Sometimes you just need to read something that's full of nonsense. So the next one that I listened to was Alanis Morissette, Words and Music, and obviously it's narrated by Alanis Morissette. I had not listened to anything in this um, series of words and music that Audible has. So I found it quite interesting. I'm not sure if all of them are set up the same way because, again, it's the only one that I've listened to, but there was a part with her talking and then there was a part where she sang one of her, her songs, such as Ironic or things like that. I grew up with Alanis Morissette's music, but I'd never actually watched any type of interviews with her. For me, I didn't realize how well-spoken she is. Now that I've listened to it, I would actually say that I would love to go out for like a cup of coffee. For me, it would be hot chocolate. But go out for some sort of like coffee shop and just sit and listen to her talk because I just find her so well-spoken that I just kind of want to sit there and listen to her talk to me. It's only a little over an hour, so it was definitely a quick listen, but it was one that at the end of it, I was like, all right, why is that done? I want more. I want to listen to more. And just getting to listen to her talk about a lot of the different things going on in her life at different points in time or how it connects with a song, I really enjoyed that. 
So for me, I gave it three out of five stars. And the reason for that is there's not a whole lot to this actual podcast. But in general, I just really, really enjoyed listening to it. I really liked it. And I could actually see myself sitting down and listening to it again in the future, maybe. And the final one that I read in the month of March was a little spoonful of chicken soup for the soul. I ended up getting this from a family friend a couple of months after my dad passed away. And I tried to start reading it and I just started bawling and I'm like okay I can't read something that's gonna make me cry I just I can't do it I can't do it right now I'll put this on my shelf I'll read it later and I decided it was time to read it and it definitely was the right time to read it I will tell you that I basically was crying the entire book (laughs) but it was it was good And I definitely think that this is one that I'm going to keep on my shelf. There are some stories I've heard previously, some that were new to me and I'd never heard before. And I really enjoyed it. I gave this three out of five stars because, again, there's not a lot there to it. But I definitely liked listening to these stories. I ended up reading a few of them out loud to my mom. And we both teared up together. But it definitely is one that I really enjoyed. And my mom and I actually said at one point in time, we're like, Dad Dad said that story at some point in time. He'd found it or heard it somewhere and he'd shared it with us. So it's kind of a little moment where we could kind of, you know, sit and, and reminisce and whatnot. So this was very good to read. I'm glad I read it now. I know I wasn't in the right place previously, You know, the books come into your hand at the right time. Maybe not the right time to read them, but definitely the right time into your life. And I'm glad that I read this one during the month of March. It was well worth it. And I'm so thankful that our family friend got it for me because it's one that I definitely needed to read when I did. So that is everything that I read in the month, my word. That is a lot. I don't think I've had a month like that previous for a while now. But again, things happen and it definitely changes uh, my my mode is like, let's just read. It's It's a good way to kind of just shut down everything else going on around you and just take that time to, to down download and and enjoy and escape for a little bit. So right now, before I finish this video, I'm going to just kind of do some stats because I know I didn't do that in my February wrap up, but I'm going to do it for March. So in case you were wondering, I had one one star, two two stars, four three stars, two four stars, and nine five stars. In the actual genres, the 10 picks for the year, I ended up reading one self-help, one fantasy, three young adult, one romance, one religious, five children or middle grade novels, two true crime, and two fairy tales. With regards to the format that I read, I had seven that were audibles, seven that were hardcovers, three paperbacks, and one ebook. For the style, I had one book that was a reread. I had two that completed series for me. 10 standalones and five first books in the series. What's really cool is with the standalones, that's kind of the winner for me this year. I'm really enjoying standalones and it kind of shocks me that I'm enjoying them as much as I am. I think it's because I'm trying not to read the first books in the series as much. I'm trying to continue on in them, but I find that right now I'm being drawn to grab those standalone novels more than something that has a series connected to it. So not sure if I'm just like looking for like completion all in a book. I don't know, but that was my month of March. If you guys would like to chat down below and tell me how your month went for you, or maybe if you've read any of the books that I talked about, what do you guys think of them? Did you like them? Did you hate them? Are you somewhere on the fence where you don't know how you feel about them? (laughs) I would love to hear from you guys regarding that. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.